Okay. Uh, thank you for passing over the baton. So um, I'm Jake Salloway Costello. I'm an assistant professor of public health nutrition at the University of Nottingham, uh, co-presenting today with one of my recently graduated students, Lena Benjaloon. And we, we will be presenting our ideas about post-human pedagogies teaching the social construction of the diet beyond anthropocentrism. This leads on really well from what Linda was just talking about, about the social construction of childhood conceptions of food. Linda ended there on a really strong note about how we could use education and reform in educational systems to bring about an end to anthropocentrism. Lena and I are going to today talk about our ideas about how we might go about doing that. Over to Lena. Thank you, Jake. Hello, my name is Lina. Uh, I'm from Morocco and I have just graduated two weeks ago um, from a nutrition course at the University of Nottingham. And uh, I am preparing to start my master's in September in London. Uh, and I would like to say before starting the presentation that I am not vegan. Thank you. As I say, I'm an assistant professor in public health nutrition. Um, I teach on our pre-registration nutrition and dietetics courses and sometimes on food science degrees at Nottingham. And I'm responsible for teaching the social and behavioral science across those programs. Um, so I teach the sociology, psychology, even a bit of economics and political science where possible. Um, I'm an originally a psychologist by background and then my PhD was more sociological in focus. I'm an active member of the BSA and presented at the last World Congress in Toronto. Much of the work that we do in this field is determined by the curricula set by our professional and statutory regulators. So nutrition is a regulated profession, not by statute. Dietetics is regulated by statute. So there's, there's a legal implication behind the training of dietitians. Today, we're going to be talking just about our nutritionists. Um, so nutrition is regulated by the Association for Nutrition. And they, like men, in many regulated professions, the training uh, through graduate streams is delivered through a set of competencies. So although we still have that free academic hand to teach whatever we feel appropriate, in order to get the degree accredited and for Lena to get her accreditation, we have to make sure that we teach those competencies at some point throughout the course. Um, so much of my work is basically how am I structuring my, my teaching around those competencies. Over to Lena. Thank you. Um, so the AFN, as Jake uh, mentioned before, are based on certain competencies that we have to achieve before the end of our degree. And these competencies are very human focused. We don't have any uh, competencies based on uh, the environment or how we're going to feed the world in 50 years. Uh, it's very uh, human focused, so focused on specific groups such as a pregnant woman, or at least, for example. Um, and uh, because of that, Jake and I concluded that the, the, the nutrition degrees in the United Kingdom are embracing anthropocentrism. Naturally, this is something that we need to change. Um, so the sustainable development goals require the deprivileging of human needs and agency in order to bring about sustainable ecosystems through planetary needs, um, developing sustainable food systems. That's one of the one of the 17 goals. And we understand this emerging idea that speciesism is not only perpetuating, but is maintaining um, existing chronic health inequalities and that it does a great deal of preventing dietary health promotion. And of course, in a world where more and more people are becoming vegan, um, we need good nutritionists to support those people. I've, I've been vegan since childhood, so I think uh, 14 years on now. When I was first, when I first became vegan, um, there was I think there was something like 60,000 of us in the UK, and now look at the number that there are today. We need qualified, knowledgeable, skilled health professionals to support those people with their nutritional needs. Um, as many others have alluded to, there is a a bit of a quackery in many of the health professions about how to approach people who embrace plant-based diets. And so Lena and I have concluded that there is an inherent anthropocentrism in the way that we teach nutrition science in this country, but also there is an urgent need to move beyond that. Lena and I have spent a bit of time over the last month getting our heads around some of our experiences um, of me being a lecturer, she being one of my students, and what we think together we could do to progress beyond um, anthropocentrism in UK academia. Over to Lena. 
Thank you. Um, over the last three years, I, I knew a bit about social sciences because I was in a French school in Morocco. Um, however, I never had a formal teaching in university. So as I said earlier, it was, very, it was focused on uh, human deficiencies, etc. And I, I realized that there was something I was interested in, but I didn't know what it was. Um, so in my final year, when Jake came to the University of Nottingham, I realized that it was um, food psychology. And it really helped me to learn more about ethics um, and started thinking more about how I could include, um, include information in my uh, work that was beyond anthropocentrism. Um, so I would like to talk about how having a uh, vegan sociologist lecturer has changed, changed my personal conceptions of the diet. Uh, first, I realized that there were a lot of um, factors that were included in the construction of a diet. Um, for example, culture, um, ethnicity, religion as well. And um, I also learned how I could, in the future, when I'll be, uh, when I'll be working, uh, give advices to my clients, but without, um, sorry, by including uh, the animals uh, inside my advices. Um, and I, I tried to do it from now, uh, when I was working on my essays, uh, by thinking more about climate change, animal rights, and the environment as well. And I also learned how I could include ethics in my work, basically. Thanks, Lena. Uh, my experience of, of working in this setting, um, so I guess my academic background is more in public health. Um, I used to teach at Birmingham City University. I came to the University of Nottingham last summer, about a year ago. In the grand scheme of things, this is a relatively uh, unique academic position in national teaching practices. So what we see up and down the country is that the that social science element of the nutrition curriculum in, all, in universities that offer that subject is that it's often taught as a side note. It's, it's very rarely actually taught by a sociologist, a psychologist, somebody with social scientific um, education or, or training. It's typically taught by a lecturer that has a spare hour to teach that, that side note on the curriculum, that bit that anybody can teach because it's not science and it's all just this, this wavy sort of magical stuff. Um, I have colleagues not immediate colleagues, but colleagues in the wider sense who call what I do magic, nonsense, um, wishy-washy is something that I get called very frequently because there's this understanding that the, the science that I teach is not actually science at all. Being in a position to change that is, is relatively unique in the grand scheme of things. My home academic department is very, very supportive of having a vegan as part of the team. Um, but I fear that colleagues sometimes see this as more of an EDI thing. It's more about diversity. Isn't it great that we've got, um, you know, we've got a vegan in the team that makes us look very progressive. Um, I don't see, I don't think that they often see the pedagogical function of offering students alternative conceptions of nutrition and dietetics. Colleagues who are more lab based typically see veganism through a very uncertain lens of caution. Um, that veganism is the unknown because it's not um, scientifically justified in the way that they might traditionally expect or um, that the, the, the science is ambiguous in certain terms, it is therefore to be avoided. Um, it's often rationalised as a sort of scientific populism. It's, it's something to be feared until we know more about it. That being said, students, younger people, far more progressively minded, are generally enthusiastic about having a vegan lecturer. And I get, I get this, this feedback in my uh, student evaluations that they like having a lecturer who can offer a different perspective. We have other lecturers in the program, um, not in my immediate team, but in our wider faculty who teach in this area and they have direct connections to the animal agriculture industry. So being able to present a different opinion and a, a almost to, to balance out that bias in some way is unique in this field. Having done this for a year, I'd, I'd like to reflect on this quote that a student um, actually voiced to me in a lecture. Um, I asked them about one of their, they take a module in the first year of their degree on uh, global food systems. And the student couldn't understand this particular uh, topic. So she said to me, why do cows on a farm have anything to do with being a nutritionist? And she couldn't understand why it was that we were teaching them about um, animal welfare and about agricultural 
systems about intensive agricultural modern methods. She couldn't understand any of those things because in her mind, nutrition is literally just about people. It doesn't matter about the animals being eaten or the planet in which these things happen. It is just about the people eating the food. Uh, my mission is very much to change that way of thinking. Um, so I've identified that there is great opportunity for me and other people in my position to be able to balance out those biased arguments, but also to present and integrate new animal rights and planetary health concepts into existing curricula. Um, I do have quite a, a significant degree of academic freedom uh, in, my, in my role, so I'm able to develop new courses, modules, sessions to present those concepts as I see fit and to generate greater integration of the social sciences and particularly sociology into our nutrition and dietetics curriculum. What I'd hope is that we therefore leave um, allied health professionals graduating from our courses going into what we can think of as post-human practice. Um, they can conceptualise diets that are not just about people. Food is about being more, is, is more than just being about for people, by people. Food is about the animals that are unfortunately being eaten or hopefully not being eaten, um, as we might be able to promote in future discourses. It's about planetary systems, about natural well-being, about ecosystems, sustainability and non-human actors. Hopefully, if we can get some of our nutritionists going out into practice with those basic concepts in mind, that would go beyond anthropocentrism that they're currently promoting in contemporary practice. Um, we wanted to conclude on these three basic points and then make some basic recommendations about what we thought students, lecturers and institutions could do to break that cycle of um, anthropocentric pedagogy. Lena, do you want to take this? Thank you, Jake. Um, so the first thing that we would like to talk about in the conclusion is that there is a lack of social science teaching in uh, the UK. Uh, the second thing is that, unfortunately, the actual teaching that we have is very anthropocentric based. And finally, um, there is an urgent need to have vegan sociologists in nutrition degrees, especially. Um, we have then uh, created a cycle uh, that we'd like to talk to you about. Um, this is the cycle of the teaching um, that we currently have in the UK. Um, on the left side, it's the student side. So it, this, this cycle cannot be broken until someone talks about it. Um, and the three things that are being maintained on the student side are, we don't have critical thinking in the degree. There is a lack of challenging and it's very individual, individualistic, which means we are not focused on the general population, but more on individuals. Uh, Jake, do you want to talk about the lecture side? So, so from the teaching practice side of things, we are, I, I feel that uh, we are constrained by our professional regulation. However, this is normal in the health sciences and the health professions. Um, so having those competencies, I do not think inherently hinders our work. I think what hinders us sometimes is that we develop initial content material for courses around those competencies and then like in traditional academia nothing ever changes. Um, I feel that we we potentially blame uh, outdated curriculums on those competencies when actually the competencies often offer that freedom to construct curricula around them. We do have a bit of a lacking of a diverse workforce in academia, well we know this to be the case anyway across all forms of diversity, we can always do certainly more. I wonder if my colleagues, uh, my local colleagues at the University of Nottingham see veganism as part of that diversity then perhaps everybody else should. Um, maybe we could do what some many uh, American universities are starting to do and intentionally hiring vegan lecturers to be part of these health sciences. And as much as Lena says that students are not being uh, given the opportunity to think critically, we simply do not teach critical thinking anymore uh, in, the, in the health sciences, something that is still a very very strong and excellent skill that is taught very well in the social sciences but in that are harder sciences and health professions, this is lacking entirely. And Lena and I call this the cycle of anthropocentric pedagogy. Lena herself wants to go on to become a university lecturer teaching focused academic. And so between the two of us, what we realized is this cycle of teaching anthropocentrism, learning anthropocentrism simply continues until you break the cycle somehow. So to end our presentation today, we'd like to leave you with nine basic recommendations about how we think students, lecturers and institutions can break the cycle of anthropocentric pedagogy. Over to Lena. Thank you. The first thing students should remember is that 
some lecturers could be biased because they have their own beliefs and views and they not on purpose but sometimes they try to influence us and then we start thinking like them instead of having our own ideas um, the second thing is to learn about a diet you have to learn about the culture first and the heritage and the traditions and the religions of the person and to do that you need to meet people um, so this goes back to diversity again um, and then the last point that I would like to make is that the presence of a vegan sociologist lecturer in university should start from year one um, in that case from the beginning of your course you know that there is a um, ethnic uh, ethnicity sorry um, no, sorry ethic and um, uh, ethic uh, point of view of the degree it's not just about how we are going to help someone to not have deficiencies or how are we going to help athletes to run faster so uh, i think it should start from year one thanks lena from a teaching perspective my three recommendations would be that all of us who teach across um, health professions or the natural sciences, that we audit our curricula frequently to identify opportunities for the integration of plant-based nutrition or the social construction of the diet. There are opportunities everywhere to teach the social sciences in the non-social science disciplines. Um, we need to be more open to those opportunities. And I feel that that process could be very much integrated with our ongoing work towards decolonizing the curriculum. Uh, we're currently going through a process of trying to Think about how our curricula reflect historical um, injustices and oppressions and potentially maybe this is something the veganism teaching could be part of that process of decolonization. And I'd like all of all lecturers to reflect on their own dietary biases. As Lena will attest in my own teaching, I'm very open about my, my own biases. I try to speak frequently to students about what I personally feel and how that relates to theory, facts, statistics, models, frameworks, all that sort of thing. Um, so I wonder whether communities of practice and pedagogy could be expanded beyond um, simply teaching practices and into what we actually think about what we're teaching. Um, just to finish off, we would leave these three tips for institutional level reform. And we would like to suggest that those professional regulators, such as the Association for Nutrition, audit their own competencies. Um, as much as I don't want to blame anything on our professional regulators, there is a need for those regulators to decide what those competencies are in an ever-changing and more progressive world. Perhaps there is greater need for post-human thinking in those competencies and about how nutrition affects non-human animals and our planetary systems. Universities, we believe, should offer students the opportunity to engage in these ideas, like, as Lena says, right from the beginning, whether that's through uh, formal educational opportunities or through a seminar series, it would be great to get greater discourses of these presented by universities. And I would also encourage universities to reimagine academic staffing to, present, to prevent those social science teaching from becoming just another side note, the wishy-washy of a social science degree. Taught by the right person, there is real opportunity for post-human pedagogy in the health and natural sciences. And I feel there's a great deal that we can learn from our social scientific colleagues. Thank you for listening to our presentation and we'd like to invite any questions that you have.